When I was a boy, my mother brought home a book on birds. She knew I liked animals. I looked through that book, and there in the back, towards the very end, was a section on extinction. I'd never heard of such a thing. They were all gone. I'd never get to see them alive, never. If I wanted to see them, they'd be in a museum, and that's it, just as a stuffed specimen. All these birds that are just astounding. But the one that was the most astounding of all was the passenger pigeon. There she was, the very last one, Martha. And I read why she went extinct. It was because people had market hunted them all the way down from billions to one. Just her. That's it. I still can't believe it. Why would we do something like that? Why are we still doing things like that? These specimens are a poor substitute for the real thing, but they're all we have now. This passenger pigeon is 100 years old. Its feathers are ruffled. It's got wires coming out of its feet. And a red glass eye stares vacantly up at me. But this is not just about one species of bird. This was just the beginning, a warning sign. Today, entire groups of animals are headed towards extinction. Relegated to museum collections, they seem lifeless. But to me, they speak loud and clear about the future of all life on Earth, including our own. What we see on these shelves is just a hint of things to come, unless we all choose to act now. When it comes to visuals, historically, we're not good record keepers at all. If you look at extinction in the photographic record, there's a few grainy pictures of some species that are gone, others we have nothing. There's even less moving footage. Here's a film of the last two Laysan rails on Earth, shot in 1923. Introduced domestic rabbits had eaten all the vegetation on the island, which proved catastrophic. And there's no photograph at all of the Laysan honey eater shown here. This film is it. Both species went extinct soon after. Or this footage showing the courtship dance of the heath hen was declared extinct in 1932. They were hunted by North American settlers for food until they were all gone. Or of the thylacine, an animal that was actually shot as a pest in Australia and Tasmania. A striped rear end and a jaw, it looked like it was unhinging. It could open its mouth so wide. The last one died in the 30s. This is all we have left, a few stuffed specimens and this old grainy black and white footage of animals in a zoo. So that's really my mission. The photo arc and video arc are a 30 year effort on my part to document every species living in human care around the world. The goal is to show what biodiversity looked like at this point in time before we began to throw it all away. I don't wanna create the world's largest obituary. I wanna inspire people and let them know every species is worth saving. Species like the cotton-top tamarind, the bearded sake monkey, the spoonbill sandpiper, the Madagascar fish eagle, the giant ibis, the Bornean rhino, the Javan green magpie, the helmeted hornbill, the Scottish wildcat, the northern white rhino, the South China tiger, and the rab's fringed limb tree frog. We just need to give these animals a bit of a break. Whether it's the mussels in the streams that literally filter our water, to songbirds that live out in the open prairie, to the pika that lives high up on the mountaintop, to salmon making their epic runs upstream to spawn, to large carnivores out on the plains of Africa taking game that's old and sick. We have to have all of these animals. Some of them our very lives depend on. You do not know what's going to happen as you remove these species from the ecosystem. You got to think, is there hope? Well, yeah, there is. Let me tell you a story. The Florida grasshopper sparrow once lived in the prairies of central Florida, but there were so few left, the U.S. government had written it off. They were allocating just twenty dollars or $30,000 a year to document its extinction. Then I went down there for Audubon magazine, and joined a team of biologists who were there setting up mist nets to capture the few birds left and do health checks on them and leg banding to track them. And what do you know? That little brown bird made the cover. 
The story implied it was going to go extinct if people did not act immediately to save it. The government all of a sudden changed its mind and allocated over a million dollars to start captive breeding programs, which have been successful. That gives me hope. If I don't do another thing with my life, that one makes me smile. The Florida grasshopper sparrow was one of the lucky ones. Enough people rallied in time to save it. Others, however, weren't so lucky. So here, in the University of Nebraska's museum collection, in a drawer, in the dark, lies a passenger pigeon, where once again, she'll wait patiently for anyone who wants to tell her story.